Hi guys, thanks for joining me again for another episode here on the YouTube channel. Um, today I'm going to do something a little different than what I planned. I had originally planned to do a review on a, a new camera that I had, the Fujifilm X-T2. Uh, I was very excited to get it. Um, I had a wonderful opportunity to get one um, and, and, and I did that. So, but I, I've changed my mind a little bit because I actually returned my X-T2 back to, uh, to uh, where I got it. And I'm hoping this video will help explain why I did that because some of you might be raising eyebrows or wondering what's the matter with me given that the X-T2 is, is the newest and latest and best camera body that Fuji supposedly makes. But, and I mean, I'm gonna preface this by saying this is 100% inspired by uh, Matt Day who did a video on an X-Pro2 that he actually had sent back or sold um, in order to get a Leica, a digital Leica. I am not getting a digital Leica. Instead, I returned my X-T2 and decided to keep my X-T1, um, believe it or not. And there's a couple reasons why I did that. First of all, or first and probably the most important reason is uh, I don't, I didn't feel like, and I should say that, that I had the X-T2 for several weeks and I took it, it became my everyday camera. My X-T1 is my workhorse as far as professionally. There's no doubt. Um, it's because of the weather ceiling, so I take it on assignments for the newspaper. I use it at events and things like that that actually I make my living from. Um, it kind of helps put food on my table, so to speak. So um, I know this camera inside and out. Um, I've had two of these, two model, two, two bodies in the past. Um, this one I've probably had maybe six or seven months now, and it's I love it. I mean, it, to me, it is a, just an amazing camera. It's done everything that I've asked it to do for the most part, um, within reason, of course. And it's been out in the rain and the snow and the cold and the wind, and uh, as well as the heat of in in, uh, in the late summer. And it's performed really well. So I had the XT2. I took it through. I, I literally treated it like I would this camera. Exact same things. We did several assignments with it, did some sports with it. We did all these kind of things. And I even pushed the X-T2 a little bit more um, than maybe I would have this camera in terms of low light stuff. And, and I used the boost mode. I got the battery grip too with, with the X-T2, just like I have with this. I like my fan of vertical grips. So I did everything I could with it. And I came to the conclusion that it really is not that much better than what I've got here for what I need. Now, you know, you could run down tech specs on, on a paper and all of us photo geeks here will start to, to, to compare the two and there really is not much of one. The X-T2 is a very, very good camera. Don't, please don't get me wrong. It's a, an amazing camera. It's the pinnacle of Fuji's tech, X-Series technology to date. Uh, it's, it's just a great camera, it really is. But it is just this, all of these are just tools for us. They're means to an end. The, uh, the, 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 the image you see in your mind, you have to have a tool to capture that image on film or on, on a card in this particular case. And the end is the, is the actual image itself. Now there's a lot of steps that go into that too. It's not so easy. There's um, fo you know, or post processing software, all that kind of stuff that also is a part of this nowadays. And I came to the conclusion that for, for the money, I mean, this, ca this camera body I got used at KEH. It was in excellent condition. I think I paid $649 for it, somewhere like $629, $649. And it's, it, to me, it looks brand new. There is not a, it, it does look like it out of the box. The grip uh, I got used as well. And I think I paid $100 for that, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, in that ballpark anyway. And it, it also is in excellent condition, and you would never know it's even been used. It's not a smudge on it. Um, there wasn't a smudge on it. So for $750, I got this whole outfit um, and an extra, and I had an extra battery. I bought the batteries from Amazon. I think the Wasabi ones, they worked, they worked great for me. Um, and the X-T2 cost me around $2,000. So that's a huge difference. For uh, about a third of the cost, I can get this set up. And in my mind, it does enough of the same thing not to warrant spending that much more money. And 
I, I think some of us lose sight of that sometimes, that these are just tools. And a lot of it depends on what we want these tools to do for us. Now, you may be in a situation where the X-T2 is a better performer for you. You might need that extra megapixel. You might need the boost mode. I really don't. Um, and I think a lot of us out there might be in the same position if we sit there and really think about the kind of pictures that we take with these cameras. And that's not saying that we all have to have the bare minimum because it's nice to have stuff that's upgraded. It really is. And it does make, in some cases, make the whole job easier. But the fact of the matter is, is you're the photographer. You are. This is just the machine. So, you know, it doesn't make you any better of a photographer to have an X-T2 compared to an X-T1 compared to an X-100. It doesn't make a difference. You know, there's, there's, a, there's a disconnect here because people, and I'm one of them, they get caught up in the hoopla and all the hype and we read tons of reviews online and we watch YouTube videos and we have these amazing photographers that come and they show you exactly what they can do with this brand new camera. And the images, will they just blow your mind sometimes. But my question is, is they probably could do something very similar with a lesser camera because they're the talent. This is not. It's just a, just a means to an end. And I think we lose sight of that sometimes as consumers and as photographers, whether you're a professional you know, taking pictures for a living or whether you take pictures of your nephew's birthday party. It doesn't really make a difference. The fact of the matter is, is remember what you're doing with these and get the right tool for that job. I mean, I know people that spend tens of thousands of dollars on digital medium format cameras, but they're fashion photographers. They need to do that. That's part of their, that's the, they're getting a return on that investment that justifies that. I'm not a fashion photographer. I am a newspaper photographer, weddings, events, just like, Stuff like that, this is great for me. I will take that extra money and buy some glass. Glass lasts. Camera bodies come and go every two or three years. There's a newfangled approach to it and there's always an upgrade and don't get me wrong, the X-T2 is, is an upgrade in many respects to this camera here. And Fuji did an amazing job with that camera body. They really did, it's a dynamite camera. I would, I would recommend it to anyone, but I'm not gonna go tell you to buy it. Um, unless you really feel like that's the tool that will help you do the job you need your camera to do. And for me, it just didn't. So I had planned on doing a uh, review of the Fujifilm X-T2. I was all excited about it. Um, I ran out, I took it on assignments, shot some sports, I shot some things around the house, I shot pictures of my dogs, um, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I thought about it a few days ago and I thought, you know what, I'm sending this back. It just doesn't, um, it doesn't give me enough return on the investment that I had to make to get it to justify selling this right here just to recoup a portion of the money that I would have gotten or that I paid for the X-T2. So this isn't really any uh, anything negative about the X-T2. In fact, it's not at all. It's a wonderful camera. What it is, is I'm hoping it makes some of you guys a little bit more aware, or at least gives you pause to think, you know, wh why am I doing this? Why am I making this purchase? Well, you know, am I getting the most value for my money? I mean, one thing I love about the X-Pro1, and I've gone on about this in other videos, is it's a great value. Is it the greatest camera out there? No, it's not. There's a lot of shortcomings. Is this the greatest camera out there? No, it really isn't. The X-T2 is a superior camera, there's no doubt. But it's not about that. I'm the photographer. You guys are the photographer. You, can, you make the pictures. This just takes them. There's a big difference. So, you know, if you have an X-Pro2 or are going to get one, I'm awesome. You're gonna love it, you really will. It's an enjoyable camera to shoot. I just don't think it's the right tool or it wasn't the right tool for what I need in my cameras. That's it. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that you're wrong or I'm right or I'm right and you're wrong, whatever it is. It's just don't get caught up in all that kind of hype um, and just get the, the camera that's the best tool for, for the job that you want it to do. So uh, that's about it. If you like the, what we're doing here on this channel, please subscribe or like the video and by all means, please comment. I try to get back to as many as I possibly can, but I've had such fabulous feedback from you guys. It's just been amazing. Between ideas for upcoming episodes to comments or, uh, on the cameras or the lenses maybe that we're talking about in, that, in this video, 
as well as some of your own experiences, which has really helped. So until next time, I will, um, I'll see you guys then and, and enjoy shooting. Bye.